God has really blessed us in this recent season by bringing to us new members that have all been preachers and ministers of the gospel. And so in the, in the next you know, month and a half, we're going to have the privilege of hearing from some of these new members. And so this Sunday is actually the very first Sunday, and I'm really excited. I couldn't be more excited to have uh, Dwayne Thompson to come up and preach. I, I'm telling you, I, I've, I've never told him this, but I, I love when Dwayne and I get together because it's not, we don't just have good conversations, but me, at least me personally, I've also experienced the presence of God with us in a very powerful and profound way. And everybody who knows the experience of the presence of God understands that when you experience God's presence, it is one of the most satisfying experiences in life. So I'm really looking forward to the message that we're going to hear this morning and really believe God has a word for us. So let's put our hands together for Dwayne Thompson. Hallelujah. Thank you, family. Glory to God. I, I don't know how anyone of us can even sit still after worship this morning. I'm telling you, I'm excited, man. Um, I, I just want to start off first with thanking Pastor and everyone here. You guys meant so much to us, and you know, as a family. I, I, I've, I've been uh, you know, pretty much all around the world and done so many different things, but I've never really seen in one particular setting so much love. And I just wanted to, 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 to throw that at you. Don't stop it. We were talking about it, uh, something last night. It's a common theme with all of us that we're hearing every day. A lot of people need to see the hope of glory, but the hope of glory, we know God has bestowed it within us. But the, the reality of it is, is sometimes people may not feel that they're able. But I just want to tell you something. You know, Pastor Mike, you really blessed me the other Sunday, a couple Sundays ago, when you told your testimony. Everything about that testimony spoke Jesus to me. And I could not, I just couldn't get away from it. I mean, it's been, there's been time at the time, and you know, Pastor talked about lineage, he talked about history, he talked about moving from glory to glory, and, and, and yeah, this is not a part of the, the, the sermon, but I believe someone need to hear this today, man. Man, don't get weary in your well-doing. And I heard something, I want to put, point out three key things that has been on my heart ever since, I believe, Thursday. And one of them was, is, is you understood and you knew that no matter what happens, the platform that God had given you was something that you didn't desire. Matter of fact, there was an issue, and you seen it, and all you wanted to do was make sure to have provision for your family. But he understood he could not forsake this burning desire of the love that God had showed for him that he had for God. He's like, hey, I'm not going to let a job take me out of position that I'm not able to come in and worship with my brothers and sisters. He knew, and I, and I was just like, man, that speaks everything about the, about the gospel. That's got kingdom all over it. And then in the midst of all of that, he understood, I guess first and foremost, he understood where his provision was for. This was just a season. Now, I understood one other thing that really got me was, is the fact that he knew that the only thing that would sustain him would be the word. I remember you saying that the word of God was something you got more word than you ever got before. He read and read and read. So he got that food, that nutrients. And the common theme here that I'm hearing over and over is what? The pursuit of love. God's love that was shared abroad. I mean, you can't, man, when you get yoked up with Jesus, I'm telling you, man, there's just something about the presence of God. And I've heard pastors say it over and over, and it excites me. I've seen people that have wanted for less, and, they, and you, think they, you think they have less, but they're so happy. Now, I see a lot of folk in here. It don't look like nobody hungry in here. It looks like we're all fed very well. But I see that same thing that I remember seeing when I was in different places all throughout the, the world. I mean, in the Philippines, folks would be loving God, and I would see them, and I mean, they really didn't have literally a pot to pee in. I would see women come in and, and they would go and you ever seen this when people call out the church type of thing? They're still doing that over there. And they went out the back and, you know, and I looked over and, and they were using, you know, the facilities, which there were no facilities. So you know what I meant? But they came in excited and, you know, and, and you knew it was because they wanted to get in the presence of God. Amen. Last night we were with the fellas 
And uh, I was sitting there, and once again, Mike's testimony going through my head. Everybody's like, man, that guy's not really saying it. I remember Trey said, Dwayne, we've been talking, and you hadn't said anything. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm thinking, dang, man, Pastor Mike does not understand that what his testimony did, it actually changed my whole thinking about things. Because I was just listening to all of the people saying, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to pose a question. I'm going to kind of add a little bit, Pastor. He said, I'm going to pose a question, but I think the common theme is the world needs love. And then Trey came back through and Pastor had to leave. And I'm sitting there. He said, hey, Dwayne, we haven't heard from you. And I thought about what Pastor Mike said. And the thing that really got me and moved me was is the fact that when he leaned into his situation instead of cowering and running away from it and put God first and he got the nutrients to go forth, he wandered and walked right into his destiny. Now, there's a corporate mandate for all of us. And sometimes when we receive Jesus Christ, not sometimes, but I know I, I, I was like this. Everybody was having different places and that, that God had installed them in the church. They were doing this. They were doing that. And they didn't know their purpose. I didn't know where to begin and start. I had no idea. But it's amazing when you get involved with the things of God. That man of God was not known by what he was saying. People seen the word of God working in his life. I believe it was a family member that said, hey, um, I, th there's a friend I got that needs some help. And I thought about that. And I'm, think, I'm sitting there thinking, and we're talking about love. I said, guess what, man? We got it. We got that love. And in the midst of all of that, as he was helping that young man, he didn't have any desire to be a pastor at all. And then God just kind of unraveled it to him in plain sight. And it's amazing how God continues to give, even in the midst of something. And there's one other thing I would like to say as well is, since I've been here, I just want to excite you, man, on your love. You, you know, that's a very precious thing. You, you can go into some churches and you don't feel the love. You'll see a lot of what I, I guess some of the word I've heard around here is the Christianese. And, you know, we speak a lot of things and we, play, we, we say a lot of word and we give people all of these analogies about things. But, you know, they don't see it. I was up here and we were called upon to, to, to help with service and with communion. And, man, I, I went to sit down and, you know, we was happy. Everything was fine. I didn't need anybody to tell me they loved me or anything like that because I knew my identity was in Christ. But the thing about it is, is I remember a uh, woman of God, you came to me and you told me, you said you have a beautiful family. And God reminded me at that moment in time that it didn't used to look beautiful. I remember a time when I had came from overseas, and this is supposed to be my beautiful, you know, my, I don't know if you guys heard of them twilight tours in the military where you're, you're, you're on recruiting duty, you know, you, you kind of, you're not in the field, you're not on deployment, and uh, my, my family fell apart. This is supposed to be a good time for me. I had been in conflict after conflict, and my family and drugged my family all around the world. My wife never had any, you know, family beside her when she's having all these children. You know, just me and her. Now, my wife before me, she received Jesus Christ and the Lord and Savior. I was still trying to be, you know, in the world. I was still trying to be super G.I. Joe man. But the reality was it is I was living off the prayers that God was uh, sending forth through my wife. And I remember sitting there, and my wife told me, I'm done. And I remember she said, well, you know, it, it's, not, it's not something that happened right now. It's, it's, you know, the enemy tries to sneak up on us sometimes, and, you know, it's little things, it's little habits, it's little things that we'll see, that these little roll bumps, and if we don't lean them into them with Jesus, with the word, with life, they will destroy so I was working a second job. I didn't know anything about working my finance. I didn't understand the, uh, these, these different uh, things that God gives us to propel us in every area. So I got me another job. I just did what I knew. Hey, man don't eat, don't work. Right? I mean, if a man don't work, you don't eat. I was trying to get provision and make my own way prosperous. So I worked at AutoZone. Anybody know anything about me? I love cars. So I went to the job that Sunday morning and I told the manager, I said, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. And uh, he says, he said, just go home, man. And I remember, once again, cars. I'm going down the highway there. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, I'm sorry to say it. And there's, there's a car show going on. And I said, no, I need, I need, to, go, I need to go home. 
So I went home and I remember through somebody's testimony, they told me and they invited me as well to church. I went through and I looked at my, my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, she seen me, she seen me, I was very distraught. And I asked her, I said, hey, you, you mind going to church with me? And with that being said, she went. And it was, you know, ironic was it was a Sunday. And uh, we went there, it's a little church called The Rock. But never forget it, man, The Rock, man. And uh, it's right there outside of, uh, what, what is it? Uh, what, what is that? Um, where's well, outside of a base that's in the Army base? And uh, we went in there to rock. The people, I seen their love. They seen I was broken. That day, I rededicated my life to God. And in the midst of it, my mother-in-law did as well. And through that, but this is what's even more awesome, man. Because the thing it was is, is I didn't have the ability to lean in. I really didn't understand. Only thing I knew is someone's act of love through them being able to show I could see God in them. It wasn't the fact that they told me to go to church or they invited me to go to church. It's as I seen their living testimony day out and day in when I was in recruiting. And I can see that people really love the Lord. They have something. But I didn't think about that, but God shed it some light at the time that, I was, that it was really needed in my life. And through that time, my mother-in-law was healed of cancer. God delivered her from cancer at that time. And I'm going to tell you, you know, we may forsake these little speed bumps and road bumps we have in life. But I can assure you, God is going to do something great through it. So I want to tell you that testimony that you said, and you saying that just speaking that love into our lives, it really moved us. It made me remember to be so thankful and to understand that that's nothing, nothing that I did and nothing that I could do. It was all about his love. And I agree with you, Pastor. I believe the love of God, seeing the hope of glory in each one of us, will change the world and change each situation. Just like every man stood together, united last night, basically making a, st a statement and a declaration that we will not be moved by it, but we will be moved by God and God alone. I know that through all of these youth we've seen, there was another time as well when we had, I think I went to play, we went, we had poker night. Oh, my goodness, these young guys, I tell you what, man. We're going to get to the word, glory to God, but I think somebody need to hear this. Amen. And, and, you know, I didn't know anything about poker, right? I never played it in my life. You know, I played spades and things like that in the military and dominoes and stuff, but knew nothing about it. But I had a great time. So me and Paul, I, Paul, I'm going to put you out there. We, 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 we were the ones. Pastor came later, but we didn't, we, 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 yeah, we, we needed help. Trey helped us out immensely. Yeah. We were borderline cheating at one time. Glory, glory. <laughs> Yeah, but I can tell you this, that what was awesome was, man, the fellowship was awesome. Please don't forsake the assembly of the believers. I understand that, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world, but how many people in here know the love of God is bigger than all of that? Everything we do that through him is, is, is a miracle work in pro a process in our lives. But this was the icing on the cake. I didn't know Zach, I didn't know the rest of the, 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 the young men there. Didn't know any of them too much. I knew of them, but didn't know them personally. And I was proud that I was a part of it because I seen what you guys had planted it within them. Zach came and we were praying and uh, we were sitting there at the end and Joseph came and we was all there and what was, what was so magnificent about it was man, we were praying basically to each problem and issue that's overseas and you know to get the people out of there man and man do this and that and this and that we're praying but the, the thing that I, I think we may have forgot was is the very thing that God desires for everyone in this world is that God loves them as well and Zach came and said wait a minute hold on this is when courage come in and we'll get to this in the message today that man a guy stood up and he said well, hold on a second I got something I, I think we need to pray about I think we need to pray for the change of heart of those that are actually trying to capture or be the captives. I need us to change the hearts of our enemies today, Lord. He said that, and I said, goodness, girl, we old folks, and we're like, man, we, we, we should have prayed that, right? But the reality of it is, is it's just a change of guard. All of these things, all of these ministers that come up here Sunday after Sunday, there's so much word in what they say. The example is set. I looked at Paul, and I said, man, what you, what you doing with Zach over here? And I just, and, and you know, that's important though. We talked about that love is one person at a time. One person, then one family, and then one community. 
I think we know that the central nucleus of every community is the church. And it has no walls. It's us. Our love will shed forth and go and do a multitude of things once we have God's anointing and his power upon us. We talk about his power, but the power is in the movement and the encouragement that we see by the youth in ourselves standing up when no one else would stand. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for us, Lord, as a, as a community, Lord, of believers, Lord, your family, your children, Lord, ready, Father God, and willing, Lord, to be moved, Lord, to the next level, Lord. We know your power is available, Lord, to all the believers, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you give us the wisdom, the insight, Lord, and the intellect to go forth, Lord, and be change makers in the earth, Lord. We understand, Lord, if we get in the way, Lord, that we need you to move us out of the way in the name of Jesus, Lord. And give us and show us, Father God, where we've messed up, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have a spirit of fear, Lord. But we are heroic because you have made us heroic in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every pastor, every minister, every person here, every co-laborer, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Bless this message and bless this congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to try to make sure that I don't go too long. And um, one thing I won't promise you is, is that um, I'm going to impede what the Holy Spirit may want to do. But I, I, I will try my best to stay on track. Glory to God. Amen. For those that, well, I would like everybody to do it. I glory to God. It's from the Lord. And uh, I'm going to be reading um, primarily out of 1 Samuel chapter 18. Well, chapter 17, let's go. Chapter 17, verse 32. The message of today, basically in the foundation of scripture, I said already, is don't forsake the opportunity. Don't forsake the opportunity. Amen? We know them speed bumps of life. Pastor Mike was out here pouring out his... I, 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 all the love he could to tell you that was a speed bump. He had to make a decision, but he didn't cower. He knew he had to lean on the word for him to go through. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32 reads, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant would go and fight with the Philistine. The Amplified reads, David said to Saul, Let no man's courage Fail because of him, Goliath. Your servant will go out and fight with the Philistine. Now let's read the opportunity and the platform God gave David. Just to give you a little background, we understand we've read the the uh, we, we've read about the story of David and Goliath. But one thing that I thought that was never really told to me, and I really that's why you have to read the word for yourself. Amen. You have to go back. You have to go back and get it. It's, Pastor talks about history. He talks about lineage. You know, I'm probably going ahead of myself, but I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to say this, is that it's important when you, re when you receive Jesus Christ as, a Lord, as your Lord and Savior that you understand that you have a rich heritage. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, it's nothing more important and, and awesome in life when you find out something awesome about your, your relatives, right? Find out something like, man, you know? I remember uh, I found out my, my uh, grandfather was in the Navy, and I was like, I didn't even know he was in the Navy until I seen it on his headstone. You know, at his grave. And I, I think it's very important because when we have those speed bumps and roadblocks in life, we have something to lean on. We understand that there are some Goliaths in life. But let me show you how the Goliaths of life can, can propel you into not only your destiny, but the benefit of those around you. Amen. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and I smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he have defied the enemies of the living God. Yeah. Family, I think it's safe to say David had experienced some roadblocks and some, some, road, some, some things that could, he could have lost his life on. No different than anything that we may have gone through today. I think, of course, you may say, I think it takes great courage to do something like that. But I can tell you right now, the hope of glory 
and Jesus Christ will propel you through it. Pastor Brandon said a long time ago, he said, even though you're going through the midst of something, you may not see or know that God's with you because it don't feel good. I, I, I don't know, have anybody ever seen, I think it's, what was the name of that movie, The Revelant or Remnant or something like that? I think when the gentleman was fighting the bear, I said, I don't even remember nothing else about the movie, but I remember that time when he was fighting the bear. It kind of messed me up, you know? I just, I, did, I didn't understand. I said, man, it, I, it, was that how it was? I, you know, it's just one of those things in life where, you know, as we go to, through something, and again, I'm gonna keep saying this, lean into it, and it's easy to turn around and run. It's easy. I was telling my wife, I said, I, 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 you know, I know some of the people in the congregation. I don't really know all of them, but I do know that there's love there. And my wife said, are you, are you, are you scared to speak in front of them? And I said, you know what? I, I don't know. And I thought about it and I said, well, yeah. I said, well what am I fearing? Well, this is, this is something that God is an opportunity for God. You're not doing this. This is something that God desires for you to do. There's something in there to help someone today. If it's only one. Glory to God. Amen. So there's a saying that we say in our house, and, and um, I've been saying it for a while. I can't say I coined it. It's uh, no word, no life. No word, no life. Um, and I understand that every situation that anyone would go to, just like David, your encouragement comes from some past experiences. You may think that that man or woman of God, man, they, they just, they can just go up and they can do that. They just don't. No, there's a process that God has that he has for each one of us. And it's easy to be distracted by our circumstances in life. Matter of fact, it's easier. And I heard a man of God say this, and I'm not going to say that I can take credit for it. But he said, hey, man, I tell you what, it's easier to say it was better in Egypt. But I can tell you that on your worst day as a believer, will never, ever, ever amount to your best day as a person in sin. Never. I can assure you of this because I've seen it in my life. I've seen it when people, they come to me, and it's just amazing how it does. You're like, man, man, he's coming for me for some money. You know, especially when a family member comes. He's coming for some. It's not that, it, you, you know, and then you, you, you have to use wisdom, right? But the wisdom from God can only come from the word of God. And then also the actual position that God has you. So there may be some things. I know there's some Goliaths in our lives right now. I know that it's just, it may seem impractical to live as a Christian in the eyes of man. I can tell you young people today, and I look at you because I know that I know that I know that you need to hear this. It may seem like you're not winning, but the honest truth is, is you're always on the winning side with God, regardless of what or, what, or, or who's doing what. You may not have it all together right now, but I can assure you and I can encourage you that when I was your age, I didn't think like that. Yeah, I was in church. I'm not saying you guys are perfect, but what I am saying is, is I see something that I don't think I've seen in me before. Maybe someone did see something in me, but what I know from what I've heard and I see how you love, I believe you're further ahead than you believe. Continue to allow God to use you. Once again, sometimes our first course of action is to turn around. I've been hearing uh, the, another common theme that a lot of attacks coming, have come into a lot of our lives. I'm praying for you. The body of Christ is praying for you. I'm telling you, there's people praying from afar that you don't even know for you. And I can assure you right now that those particular attacks, that we don't have to cower anywhere or go around them. Romans, uh, turn to Romans uh, 1 and 16. Now you, I can say that, I can just say it for the sake of time, but just for you to go to later on, I'm primarily reading out of the King James, but hey, it, look, I'm not ashamed to read any other one. Glory to God. And Romans um, chapter 1, verse 16, it says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel meaning being the good news of Christ, for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and con look, hold on to that right there, personal trust and confident surrender 
and firm reliance to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, I want you to understand something before I even get more into the trust portion on this. It said, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Man, when we, have, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and say we are grafted in, we have the opportunity to tap into something that it does not matter what is in front of us. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to say this, this thing to you. I, mean, I, when I, I remember when I, when I told you I, I went with my mother-in-law and re rededicated my life. I remember I only knew John 3.16. That's all I knew. I was holding on to John 3.16 so long, I said, man, I need to get me some more word. It was important. But that's all I had. You hang on to what you have until you know better. Amen? Just hang on to it, family. All right, God. So let's look at the word trust here in verse 16. To, from what I see here is to live the word of God and to share his word to others, I must trust the word of God. I got to trust it. I got to trust the word of God. And the book of Psalms, for the sake of time, I'll just read it. Verse, um, chapter 34 and verse 8 reads, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. Let me get you excited about the word. I, there's a couple of scriptures that really, that, that you know, you got to hold on to them. There's some foundational scriptures and some different meanings and some different points of our life that really mean some. I encourage you to get them. Man, I tell you what, man. I, I tell you, when I, when, when I was believing for me and my wife to get together, man, I got a scripture and she knows what I'm talking about and I taped it on my mirror. The woman of God came up to me. She had cerebral palsy. Now, this isn't, this isn't a no-joke story. I'm sitting in this congregation. It's small. It's an old, 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 old church. And I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. And she comes up to me, and she hands me this little paper. And she tells me, she said, she said, I want you, son, to read that. God told me to read that every day. And I said, well, man, I'm probably, I was losing it and everything. So I ended up putting it on, taping it on my mirror. I was coming home. No one was there. Big old house, all these cars. And my wife was gone and my child. And I remember, man, I said, man, you know what? I'm going to make room for my wife. I looked at the word, and then I began to work the word. God started giving me mandates of things to do. Yes. His word manifest. Yes. Amen? I encourage you to find some scriptures. The Lord will bring you to them. Proverbs 16 and 20. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. And whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. I need happiness, family, and I know we all do. Jeremiah 17 and 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. What does the word blessed mean here? The word blessed, uh, blessed in, the, in this particular thing means a self-contained happiness. Self-contained. Well, I don't know about you, but when I was praising God, man, I don't know. Look, I know the gentleman behind me was a visitor. Man, but forgive me, man, if I... If, if I <laughs> I started getting in the way. I don't even think the man can see the words at one point. But I, I'm telling you, this self-contained happiness is uh, God usually, it seems like I know for me in my life, he has found a way for it to explode. And he does it at the right time. He's just looking for folks that will allow it to explode. As our family sees us day in and day out, Worship, and when we have those tough situations, make those choices. You're going to see the transformation and the transfer of your love of Christ to your children and then the transfer to your community. I thought about the uh, freeze we had, and, and yeah, I, you know what? I missed it. I missed it. I, when I mean missed it, I missed it while I had neighbors on each side of me. I didn't check on them. I missed it. That was an opportunity. See, we're looking for things sometimes in places that we don't need to. There are opportunities right in front of us. I, I, I looked, I said, man. And, and, you know, I'm thinking, it's all of these little things that try to stop you sometimes. I was talking to Brother Mel yesterday, and I wanted to thank him because he kind of freed me. You know, um, you know I, I, I found that it, some of the things that I'm into is, very, is not the most popular things in, you know, in some places, right? But you know, the brother told me, he said, man, you ride your low rider if you want to. I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> and that freed me up, man. It, it, it freed me up. My wife, man, she's like, you know, get that thing out the garage. You've been there for almost 20 years. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what we call it. It's almost like, if you would call it yard art, it's, it's becoming that. And, uh, and so I just say that because there's little things that will stop you. And folks ain't worrying about you and none of that stuff. 
They're not worrying about that. You think somebody worried? I mean, sometimes, I believe, uh, Pastor, you said something about, you know, if people would just get out of this thing and they just stuck to a certain genre of gospel and this and that, you know, they would have more friends. They would, you know, just being in a place where God is open. This division that's going on in the world is not of God. And it's not of anybody in here. You don't have to be divided because of something you think is, 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 is something that you may feel that someone's going to look at you side eye about. It doesn't matter. You're free in him. Just as long as you stay in the constraints of what he has for us. We live a certain way. And it is practical. It's not impractical. I tell you that you, it's not impractical. Because I thought it was corny living as a Christian. I thought it was corny. Y'all got it better than us. I remember some of the Christian music when I was growing up. Some of that, was it was kind of like, oh. I mean, man, it was like that. I don't know if you guys had it. I remember going to Trevor to church. You said something about Antioch Baptist. I went, my church I grew up was Antioch Baptist Missionary Church. I ain't going to never forget. And my, my mom, she would just push me into everything. She'd be like, man, I'd be like, mom, you had to use your Sunday speeches. I mean, not Easter speeches. And she would go, and they would have a little speech. She would give me the one that was, I'm like, man, why you do that to me, mama? And I remember, it's like everything that I had to do in church, it felt like I needed to run. I didn't ever feel the, the love, but there was one person. Like I stand before you, I've had a lot of things that happened in my life, in my youth. I got involved in a lot of things that were very ungodly. I ran with a lot of ungodly people that I'm happy to say that the ones that are still alive, they have, they have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So that is by far. Now, there is a few we're working on, glory to God. I haven't forgot them. Amen. Just like my Lord hasn't forsaken. But I had to wait and get my, well, I had to wait till God got me to a place that I was able to go talk to him so I won't fall back into that sin. But I knew that I knew that God was there with me. There was a gentleman by the name of George Dunwitty, and um, this gentleman was a, uh, like a director for camps. Our, our church did a camp in the summer. I had gotten some, some trouble and I went to, to boys' home. And um, I was with some guys and yeah, it's one of those things where I had to do community service. But the only reason why I was able to do community service is because the people of God, they came to my trial. They didn't abandon me, man. They didn't abandon me. They didn't look at me, and I thought that I was like, man, I can never walk in that church again. They didn't do it. And I am, I'll never forget, he had me come into the church at the camp, and I was working there as a counselor, and a counselor to the counselor, because I wasn't really allowed to get paid or anything. And that man told me, he said, God's going to do something wonderful through you, young man. You just need to quit fighting. You need to understand that God's love is authentic and real, and it's here for you. And I remember that's major speed in my life. I didn't want to hear anything my mother or father said, but I hung on to John 3.16. I remember it. I'm telling you, then I remembered it, and I did learn it through an Easter speech. Amen? Glory to God. But my favorite example here is this in Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. This one I do want you to get to, because I believe this is going to bless you immensely. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who put their trust in him, violating the king's command. Did you hear that? That took some faith, right? That took some heroism as well. And yielded up their bodies so as not, as not to serve or worship any god except their own god. How does this trust manifest, family? The answer lies in verse 17 in Romans 1 and 17. See, what happens a lot of times, what's great about Scripture is, is God never contradicts himself. Amen? You know, you'll, feel, you'll find contradictions in everything that you see in the world. A person, one moment, the politician will be up there and he'll be great, right? And then he's out of office, gone. And then he leaves you abandoned. He leaves you orphaned. God has never and will never and has not left us orphaned. He's given us something that is the most invaluable and intangible thing in our lives. And that's the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at in Romans 1 and 17, and this is how, how this manifests. For in the gospel of righteousness, which God ascribed, is revealed both springing from faith. 
the vehicle of faith. Faith. Family, the vehicle of faith has been given to each one of us just as the measure of faith has been given to you as you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may say that, man, I don't have enough faith to that. Just hang around some folk up in here. Hang around them. The encouragement of your love can propel you from glory to glory as God sees fit when you hang around those of like-minded believers. It's very important, man. We were talking about it last night, the man, to guard your love. Your love of God is something. And that's why, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try not to go back to it too much more, uh, Pastor Mike, but I've I seen that love in that testimony, man. And, see, he guarded that. He was not going to allow even a job, the provision that in the earth that God has set forth to help and, and keep his family. He's not going to let anything come between that. I say right now that we don't have a problem in society, and God has given us over the earth, right? So the only problem it may be is maybe, maybe we don't know where to begin. Brother Paul said last night that, you know, sometimes when somebody, when a vision is cast, sometimes people get a little, you know, discouraged. They're like, well, man, I got to go reach the whole Liberty Hill neighborhood. How does that get? No, it don't start like that. It starts with you and your household. It starts with God seeing you, so it starts with your family seeing God in you and through you. You know, you know when your son, you told him like three, four times, that, look, well, you need to go brush your teeth. We got, we, we got to go. And he's still looking at cartoons and one play Smash Brothers or something. You know what I mean? He's still doing that. And you got to come to him and love. Like, come on, young man. Now, I'm not saying you not to rear your children up. I'm not even telling you to spare the rod. I'm not telling you that. I believe in orderly and decency in the kingdom of God. I believe God will give you wisdom to operate in today's society. But I know that I know that if we don't hold on to the love of God, that there's no way we're going to win the world. There's no way. They need to see something different. And I believe that different is just within us today. Those Goliaths in our lives, you don't have to leave, you know, with that Goliath on your back no more. Last week, I believe, uh, uh, of the pastors up here, and, and, and they got a word of God if somebody had carpet tunnel. Man, run up there. Like, I don't know if I got it, but I had a fun. Man, you run on up there. <laughs> Glory to God, get it. I'm telling you, I used to stand at the people. People, I, you know, I, I, I felt, I, I, start, I start getting kind of feeling like, man, I hope these people don't feel no spooky, but I'm at the altar every day. I remember, you know, when we were first, uh, you know, just getting knowledge and, revelation on what God can do in our family and change the landscape of our whole generation and changing our finances and things and coming free from things. I mean, I was coming every time the, the church, church doors was open, man, I was running, coming up like, man, I need some help. You know, and, and I started to get spooky. I said, hey, man, I, I don't understand. And I would pull on people and I would tell them, and, and those men and women of God would lead me to the word of God. And then I heard a minister say, he said, look, man, you're going to have to stop doing just relying on your pastor. You're going to have to start taking the word and eating it each day, eating it and eating it and eating it. And then revelation knowledge will come on every situation that you have. I'm telling you, it's probably one of some of the best advice that I've ever received. I'm not telling you not to listen to our pastors. I'm not telling you not to listen to the people that you co-labor in Christ with. But I understand that as ministers of reconciliation, we have to go a step beyond. Pastor has been preaching his heart out about knowing our history and what happened to the Roman Empire. We've been, he's been, he's, it's, it's so many little nuggets. Now, I'm not saying we're not doing a good job, but what I am saying is, is what's the next step? Yeah. Do not leave here today without going forth and taking a self-evaluation on something that may be blocking you for the destiny of what God has. And if you have an issue, a, 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 a roadblock, which I call faith builders now, I tell my daughter all the time, that's a faith builder, girl. You're gonna have to get up your faith. What you gotta know that you gotta know what you know. You gotta know what you know. You don't have to leave that way today. There's men and women of God in here that desire they'll pray with you, they'll believe with you, and you know what? It, it may not be. You may say that I'm sitting in the audience, they need to come up to the pastors in the front. I'm not saying that they're not supposed to, but you can pray with them too. Trey, brother, you bless me, man. I tell you what, we need to hang out more, all of us. We had a great time, man. I'm telling you, I don't, I, like I told you, I don't really have, I haven't had a lot of friends, 
but it's nothing like being with family. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for being my family. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I, wanna, I just want to bring this one thing out once again. Once again, in the Amplified, I'm reading Romans 1 17. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing forth from faith and leading to faith, disclosing a way that awakens more faith as it is written and forever remains written, the just and upright shall live by faith. Glory to God, family. Please don't leave here That's if there's something that you're worried about. I don't care if it's a... Uh, Something as little that you feel as little. But when I was growing up, I was a young child, you know, just going into certain classrooms when I felt I was ill-equipped. I hadn't done my due diligence. It could be something simple as, you know what, I don't know if to read my Bible. Get connected. There's something going on every day in Life Springs. I, I looked and I said, my goodness, they got, there is literally something almost going on every day. So get connected. I, 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 I'm not saying you got to be at everything. Don't, you don't have to be there. You got to use wisdom. You got a family. You got to lead. You got a, a community to change. But once you poured out all that you poured out, please come back to get full up. Your brothers and sisters need you to sharpen that iron. We need to build. There's, there's testimonies, man, that will get you through what, 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 what may be you seen that roadblock in life. Amen? Glory to God. If the word of God bless you today, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, please. Glory to God. Awesome. That was a wonderful word. We just praise the Lord. As we, we always want to respond to God's word because his word is not just spoken for the purpose of um, information, but it's life transformation. And so we will have pastors up here. If you want to pray, if you have roadblocks in your life, as we heard today, things that are weighing you down, or even people, I mean, as Christians, we should have people in our lives that we are carrying a burden for then just come on up and somebody will be here to pray for you. And then we also always like to encourage just a group of people who just want to pray. Pray for God's love to rule and reign. Pray for his presence. Uh, pray that God would speak because God speaks to communities. He does. And he has been, he's given different people here prophetic dreams about the church. And we need to always be hearing from God. And uh, one of the ones that was really clear to me and really inspired that idea was uh, somebody had a, a dream about the church, pe church members were praying for the manifestation of God's presence and glory. And then it came. I'm like, okay, well, then we want to respond and do it. Because the, the, the main reason, I, everything has to be tempered with the right motives. Why do you want his glory? So that we can show we're better Christians than everybody else. no. It's because there's a world out there that desperately needs Jesus, and we, we can't save the world. But we can ask the Lord, and we can ask for his presence, and we can ask for his love to possess us. Say, Lord, I want you to possess me with your love. I want, like I saw in Paul, I want to love like that, where we can say I'd even be cut off from Christ. So that message you brought is so important. And we really make love the primary emphasis. It's not just the wishy-washy love. It's the love of God in Jesus Christ. It's the love of God revealed on the cross. That's what we want to rule and reign. And we also are the community that also believes that church never ends. It just changes form. And so the form may be immediate time to thank the Lord for some wonderful food friends. So if you want to leave, you can leave. The Lord goes with you. Just pray, Lord, that your presence and your glory would be upon your people, that your love would rule and reign over us, that you would reveal your love through us, that you would turn on the light in this world. And we know when the light of your love and your truth is turned on, the darkness will be broken. Lord, we bless your people. We pray for your presence. We pray for your grace. We pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to be manifested in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.